Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! I mean, you talk about epic fishing days. Yeah! Nice bull dolphin right there. specifically try and hunt down mahi mahi and tuna. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grab as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right folks, so like I said, what we're doing is we're going over how I teach folks to troll. Now remember, trolling is the active pursuit of hunting fish. You want the fish to chase you down and strike on the primal instinct to feed. All right, so let's go on ahead and get on the boat. We're gonna introduce you to the crew, talk a little bit about the boat and head offshore. All right, folks, it's another beautiful South Florida fishing morning. We're rigging up and getting ready to head offshore. We're gonna do some trolls. We are on Paul's boat. We're heading towards Boynton Inlet. We're gonna head out offshore in search of Mahi Mahi. This is Paul. Say good morning to What's Paul. Up, guys? This is his buddy Randy. Good morning. We are on Paul's boat. It's a 28 foot Cobia, two 200 Yamaha. All right, so right now we're headed through Boynton Inlet. One of the more tricky inlets to navigate if you uh, don't have any experience going through it. So, you know, you can be a little bit of a bumpy ride. So that was a nice run out of Boynton Inlet. One of the more sketchy inlets, if you ask me, because it's a long, narrow channel, and when you have lots of boats traversing, the wakes that bounce off the wall can make it a very confused sort of washing machine effect as you're traveling through there. So we headed offshore, and I said, hey, let's start in about 250 feet. We're gonna throw out the lines. So we started prepping the boat. We started deploying the outriggers, letting out our lines. We're gonna do a full spread. We're gonna have two rods in the outriggers, a shotgun line on the stern, and we're also gonna troll a planer. You always wanna try and get a planer out if you have the availability to get a full spread, that way you're down in the water column. We're gonna be trolling Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammers, and we're gonna use a dolphin colored squirt squid and a blue Mylar Sea Witch with a Bonita strip on our planer. All right, so we're up and trolling. Like I said, we got a full spread. We got two outrigger lines. Those are our long lines. Medium class trolling gear. Pen 8500 over here. Pen 12H International over there. Those are our long lines. They're out about buck 50, 200 feet. And on the port side, we got our planer. Four six planer, six inch Bonita strip. Over here on the starboard stern, this is our short line out about 100 feet we got. International 30. We got an east southeast wind about 510 knots, not bad. Perfect dolphin fishing conditions. So, right now, what we're doing is blind trolling, gonna start looking for forms of life any seaweed, any floating debris, anything, and uh, see if we can get into the bite. So, when you're trolling, what you're doing is you're targeting hunting fish. You're not going after fish that are at rest or looking for an easy target. You're going after hunting fish. So speed is a key. If you're going too slow, you're presenting an opportunity for these fish to swim up and examine baits. You want fish to chase you down, literally. You want them to strike on the impulse to feed. That's what trolling is all about. When you're going for dolphin, you want to do, on average, around eight to 10 miles an hour. So we've got a plane around, so we're going to stick around eight miles an hour, not much faster. So we are coming up on some debris in the water. It looks like floating log floating piece of bamboo or something. These are the signs of light that hold the fish. It's what we're looking for. It's ideal. Now, whether or not there's gonna be fish underneath it, we shall see. But this is a nice size, about 10 foot long piece of bamboo floating right there. It's about 10 yards off the boat. We're gonna troll by it. 
see if anybody's home. That would be, you know, a great start to the day if we get hooked up on this. If not, we're gonna press on. Uh, as we're trolling by, we'll see if somebody wants to bite, see if somebody, you know, gets into the hookup. These are these ideal conditions that you go with. Oh, you ever caught a dolphin before? Only once. All right. Long time ago. Second time. Second time. All right. He's skipping along the top. So let's walk up. All right. So as he's getting up to the boat, I want you to do me a favor. Can you turn the boat a little bit this way? Just a little. Here we go. There we go. Dolphin in the boat. So after that first dolphin, we had very important decision-making process to go through. The first order of business is we were gonna go and try and track down that bamboo that we hit it off of. So we stayed in the same depth zone and we set the lines back out. We went back on the hunt trying to track down our structure. And we traveled along north with the current for a good bit and we couldn't relocate it. So at this point, we had a decision to make. Do we stay in this temperate zone where we got the hit or do we head out further and try and find another temperate zone where the bait's going to be, where there's going to be more fish? And our decision was to head further out. And the action slowed down until we got another hit. And with this hit, I grabbed the equipment and I'm going to retrieve this fish. Now what this does is this is going to give Paul a little bit more insight on how to use your boat as a tool to effectively help the angler retrieve fish. And at this moment, Paul was becoming a real pro at maneuvering the boat and helping the boat keep the pressure on the fish and yet make the positioning of the fish against the boat effective enough to make it easier on the angler. Paul was already starting to do this automatically like it was second nature without any further guidance. He had an understanding of how to keep that boat going forward and keep that pressure on that fish. And before you know it, we had a nice fat skipjack tuna rolling up to the boat and gaffed him and got him on board. All right, folks, so while we're out here on the water, I wanna talk about one of the most important assets you have being an angler, that is your eyes. You're gonna need to protect them if you want any sort of longevity in this game. And if you're looking for top-notch protection for your eyes, whether it's from multi-layered UV protection, high percentage rate light reduction, and some of the best quality glare reduction on the market, you're gonna to wanna to consider using Waterland sunglasses. Built by anglers for anglers. When you're trolling and you're hooked up, you've got your boat. Let's say our angler is back here we want to try and keep our fish almost like this, with our boat going forward, which keeps pressure on the fish, yet it relieves some pressure from the angler. So we're currently bleeding this tuna right on the deck. Bleeding them out makes it so that they cool down, they don't get overheated, and they don't bleed into the good meat. His heart's shutting down, he's starting to spaz out. At seizures and soon his pectoral fins will lay down and that's when we will know that his heart has pretty much come to a stop and then we can throw him on the ice and get him pulled down and then we got some nice tuna meat going on all right so after the tuna we got reset back up got the lines back in the water we continued our search after a little while the action had yet again slowed so we said hey we're going to turn back in and go and see if we can find the dolphin back in shallower. And that's exactly what happened. Right in around 650 feet, we got another hookup. All right, we're on another dolphin. Let him run, let him run. 
Oh, uh, you want to slow down just a hair? Don't take it off, huh? Take off. Up on a fish as relentlessly jumping, taking off. Remember when I said we were coming up, back up where we hit them earlier? Nice. What you want to do is pull back. Yep, pull back. Reel on the way down. Keep keep turning into them a little bit. You pick out a ton of line. There you go. All right, pull back. Wind on the way down. Perfect. There you go. Teaching them a little bit about finesse right now. Getting that fish, not making him any more angry than he already is. Kick it this way a little bit. A little bit of, little bit of heat on the fish. There you go. There you go. Okay, all right, good to go. Pull the force. Yep, this fish took out a ton of line, so. <laughs> Randy, Randy gets the winner of the day, the smoker. Watch the weeds too, we don't know. So if we start doing that, we're gonna adjust because you're heading back towards that weed line. We can start kicking this way and we're gonna play with him to stay on this side of it. So what I'm talking about with Paul is we got our weeds in front of us and we gotta keep this fish so that we don't drag him through the weeds. When you get the hookup, always, you know, been through this many times now with Paul. He's a pro at it. Keep that fish off to the side. Keep your boat and slope forward. It keeps tension on the fish, which wears him down. And it also makes it easier for your angler rather than dragging him straight through the water. Put that rod tip down on your hip. Might be more annoying, but you might get more level. Still got a ways to go. Yep. There we go. He's get he's coming in though. He's getting worn out. When they start, when dolphin typically start jumping like that after their initial hookup, they're expending energy that they no longer have. So there he is. There he is. He's jumping out there. He's a mad dolphin. Coming on in. So you know the boat and the angler of the reel, all that is doing work to take away energy from the fish. Yep, here he comes. Let him do it, let him do it, let him do it, let him do it. There you go. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. If he's gonna take off, don't reel again. Alright. Okay. Back at it. Back at it. Our fish is about 20 yards away, not even. Here we go, here he comes. There we go. Nice. Hey. All fit in the boat. Anyway. Hey. Good fight. All right, man. Awesome. There we go. We're on the dolphin. There we go. Yeah. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about my thought process that it goes through when I am trying to teach folks about the tactic of offshore trolling. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.